This German diesel engine defied every convention. While other manufacturers refined radiators, coolant systems, and water pumps, Deutz engineers abandoned them entirely. What they created became legendary among farmers and mechanics, yet it also fueled one of the fiercest debates in diesel history. And the truth behind it is more surprising than you'd expect. To understand why Deutz would build such a bizarre engine, you need to understand where they came from. Deutz wasn't a minor newcomer trying to carve out recognition. It was one of the original pioneers of internal combustion engines. The company was founded in 1864 by Nicholas Otto and Eugen Langen. Otto, the inventor of the four-stroke Otto cycle, created engines that transformed the industry. Notably, a young Rudolf Diesel worked at Deutz's Cologne facility before developing his own namesake engine years later. With links to two of the greatest pioneers in engine history, Deutz built a legacy few can rival. By the early 1900s, Deutz engines were already powering factories, mills, and heavy equipment across Europe. They specialized in rugged stationary and industrial units that could run for days without interruption. When Germany began rebuilding after World War II, Deutz engines played a key role in powering tractors, construction machines, and transport equipment that made reconstruction possible. As the company expanded through the mid-20th century, its engines developed a reputation for reliability in extreme environments. Deutz became a global brand, supplying power units to Africa, South America, and the Middle East, where dust, heat, and poor water quality punished conventional designs. In the United States, farmers got to know the brand in the 1970s and 80s through the Deutz Alice tractors that carried German engines under American sheet metal. This long history of innovation and hard-earned reliability laid the groundwork for Deutz's boldest move in the 1960s. While most manufacturers were refining traditional water-cooled designs, Deutz engineers drew on their global experience and asked a radical question. Could a diesel engine survive without a radiator at all? By the 1960s, Deutz introduced the 912 series with the F4L912, quickly becoming its most iconic engine. What set it apart wasn't raw power or futuristic technology. It was the absence of everything farmers expected to see on a diesel. There was no radiator, no water pump, no antifreeze, and none of the hoses or gauges that had become second nature for operators. The entire liquid cooling system that defined other diesels simply wasn't there. The F4L912 itself was a four-cylinder, naturally aspirated diesel displacing 3.77 liters and typically producing between 46 and 73 horsepower, depending on application and rating. But its defining feature was the way it shed heat. Instead of circulating coolant through a radiator, Deutz engineers cast massive fins into the cylinder barrels and heads, creating a broad surface area for air to pull heat away. A heavy-duty fan, mounted directly to the crankshaft, forced air across those fins with relentless consistency. This system eliminated dozens of potential failure points, making the 912 a more reliable engine than anything else on the market. The fins were more than just functional, they were a statement. Each rib of cast iron or aluminum was designed to capture airflow and dissipate heat as efficiently as possible. The cylinders bristled with these protrusions, giving the engine a muscular, almost skeletal look. The wraparound sheet metal shroud funneled the fan-driven air over every critical surface, ensuring even cooling across all cylinders. To operators, it looked more like something you'd see bolted to the nose of an airplane than under the hood of a tractor. That appearance was matched by a distinctive sound. The cooling fan produced a high-pitched whir that cut through the deeper diesel thrum. Giving the 912 an acoustic signature you could recognize from a field away. Mechanics joked that you could identify a Deutz by ear long before you ever saw the fins. For some, that sound became a badge of reliability. For others, it was one more reminder that this was not a normal engine. Skepticism was natural. 
Farmers had trusted water-cooled engines for generations, and they knew how to keep radiators alive with a wrench and some patience. The idea of a diesel with no radiator at all felt risky, even reckless. But the fins proved their worth. In sub-zero winters, there was no coolant to freeze and split a block. In scorching summers, there was no boiling radiator to sideline a tractor. The airflow system, as simple as it looked, had been engineered to survive conditions that punished conventional engines. Deutz wasn't gambling blindly. The company had spent decades watching engines fail in factories, mines, and construction sites, and they knew where weak points lay. Radiators clogged with dust, hoses split under pressure, water pumps failed without warning. By stripping all of that away and relying on nothing but cast fins and forced air, Deutz eliminated entire categories of breakdowns. What had once looked like a weakness, the lack of a cooling system, was revealed as one of the 912's greatest strengths. The F4L912 found its way into an incredible variety of machines, from tractors and combines to bulldozers, workboats, and even armored vehicles. This versatility wasn't luck. Deutz engineered the engine with generous safety margins and components that could survive abuse across industries. The four-cylinder block, conservative compression ratios, and oversized bearings gave the 912 the stamina to run day after day in conditions that sidelined competitors. Agriculture was its primary market, and here the 912 quickly built its reputation. In Africa's scorching heat, water-cooled tractors often overheated when radiators clogged with dust. The Deutz kept going, its fins shedding heat with no vulnerable plumbing to burst or corrode. In Northern Europe and Canada, there was no coolant to freeze and split the block. Farmers discovered that the 912 wasn't just easier to maintain, it worked in climates where water-cooled engines failed outright. That toughness extended beyond farms. In construction, the 912 powered bulldozers, excavators, cranes, and generators where radiators were constant liabilities. Flying debris or clogged cores could bring a water-cooled machine to a halt, but the Deutz kept running with little more than regular oil and filter changes. Operators learned to appreciate its independence from fragile cooling parts, especially in remote sites where downtime was costly and replacement parts took weeks to arrive. Marine service proved another natural fit. On small boats and workboats, traditional raw water cooling systems were prone to corrosion, scale, and blockages that could cripple an engine at sea. By eliminating seawater pumps and complex plumbing altogether, the 912 gave operators a power plant that could run reliably with less maintenance and lower risk. Its simplicity made it popular in commercial fishing fleets, harbor workboats, and small coastal cargo vessels. Owners valued the fact that the engine didn't depend on the quality of seawater it pulled in. Militaries also saw the appeal. The 912's lack of a liquid cooling system made it less vulnerable in combat environments where radiators could be pierced by bullets, shrapnel, or even rocks thrown by vehicle tracks. The air-cooled design meant fewer hoses and pumps to service under field conditions, which translated into higher readiness rates. Versions of the 912 found their way into armored personnel carriers, troop transports, and auxiliary equipment used by NATO and other armies during the Cold War. In desert deployments, the absence of radiators eliminated a major failure point as sand and grit constantly clogged water-cooled systems. In Arctic conditions, it removed the need to carry antifreeze in bulk, one less logistical burden. Part of the engine's longevity also came from details hidden inside. The 912 used replaceable dry liners, a proven Bosch mechanical fuel injection system, and a full-flow oil filtration circuit that kept wear particles under control. The fan-driven airflow washed across every finned surface, evening out temperatures and reducing heat. With clean air, fuel, and oil, these engines routinely logged tens of thousands of hours. 
Perhaps most remarkable, the 912 often outlasted the machines wrapped around it. Tractors and construction equipment would wear out, rust, or become obsolete while their Deutz engines still had years of life left. A secondary market flourished as mechanics pulled 912s from dead machines and installed them in fresh applications. Their straightforward design meant troubleshooting was rarely complicated, and most repairs could be done with hand tools by a skilled operator. Stories spread of engines firing up after years of abandonment in fields or barns, adding to the legend of an engine that simply refused to quit. The downfall of the 912 wasn't mechanical. It was regulatory and market-driven. By the late 70s into the 80s, emissions and noise standards were tightening across North America and Europe. The U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, EPA, and the European Economic Community, EEC, were setting limits that had never existed before. Engines that had once been judged solely on durability and uptime were now tested in controlled labs with sensitive instruments. What made the 912 reliable in the field became liabilities under those new conditions. Air-cooled diesels inherently ran hotter than water-cooled designs, and those higher combustion temperatures produced greater quantities of nitrogen oxides, or NOx. Unlike unburned fuel or soot, which created visible smoke, NOx was invisible but far more tightly regulated. Controlling it required precise combustion timing and, increasingly, exhaust after treatment. The 912's simple mechanical injection and limited ability to regulate cylinder temperatures meant it couldn't keep NOx within new legal boundaries. Competitors with water-cooled blocks and electronically managed injection were able to keep temperatures stable enough to pass. Noise regulations became another battlefield. The 912's direct drive fan produced a shrill, high-pitched whir that was unmistakable on a job site. Farmers and operators had long considered it the sound of reliability. But decibel meters told a different story. As governments began imposing workplace noise limits, often under pressure from labor unions, tractors and construction equipment had to be tested for sound exposure inside the cab and at the operator station. Water-cooled rivals could hide behind radiators and sound-deadening panels. The 912's exposed fins and fan made it nearly impossible to disguise. Fuel efficiency was also under the microscope. Rising oil prices in the late 70s forced buyers to look harder at operating costs. And here the 912's simplicity worked against it. The cooling fan consumed power continuously, even when maximum cooling wasn't required, draining a few critical horsepower from output. Combined with the hotter running cycle, Thermal efficiency lagged behind newer water-cooled engines, designed with tighter tolerances. For farmers and fleet operators calculating costs in dollars per hour, that margin mattered. Diodes tried to adapt. Engineers experimented with turbocharging, intercooling, and even muffling systems designed to quiet the fan and exhaust. They also developed the Series 913, a close relative of the 912 with improved cooling airflow and updated fuel injection, meant to squeeze through the early emission standards. It bought the company some time, but the writing was on the wall. Every new feature that made the engines cleaner or quieter also made them more complicated and expensive, eroding the original advantage of simplicity. The challenge wasn't just the regulators, it was the buyers. By the 1980s, customers expected more than indestructibility. They wanted engines that were quieter, cleaner, and cheaper to run, and they were willing to trade a bit of mechanical ruggedness for those gains. Cab comfort was improving, farms were scaling up, and equipment buyers were thinking in terms of fuel cost per acre, not just whether an engine could survive abuse. The rugged simplicity that had once defined Deutz's appeal now looked outdated compared to electronically controlled, water-cooled engines from Cummins, Perkins, and John Deere. The 912 didn't fade because it was unreliable. It faded because the rules of the game changed. 
The same engine that was perfectly suited to the needs of the 60s and 70s was misaligned with the demands of the 80s and beyond. Even with the 913's improvements, the concept of large-scale air-cooled diesels was being boxed out of mainstream markets. Today, thousands of 912 engines are still running in tractors, boats, and stationary power units, proof of how well-built they were. But their legacy isn't just longevity. It's a reminder that even the most rugged, practical engine can be left behind when the world shifts around it. The insane truth was that the 912 wasn't killed by failure. It was killed by progress.